I think it's very hard to think that anyone would want to do it to start with. I mean, it's almost always presented as a last ditch option, uh, insurance almost, against the problem that we know about, which is global warming because of man-made carbon emissions. So this isn't a good idea, geoengineering, but the question becomes, is it better than what we might get without it? Um, and I think all of the risks and all of the problems which are very real with geoengineering have to be balanced against all the risks and all the problems that we think are going to come through increased temperature rise, which is what geoengineering aims to stop. I don't think anyone would claim they know everything about the Earth's atmosphere and the way it works. It's, it's very, very complex. Even with climate change, which we thought we understood, there's lots of scientific uncertainty still about what, how, it, how quickly it might come, uh, where it might happen. Um, and I think with geoengineering, what you're doing is you're basically taking something which, is, which has been balanced for an awful long time and you're giving it a kick somehow. I mean, this is, this is a very, very severe uh, change, a very, very severe man-made change that, that you're introducing. And I think that raises questions about, well, what might the side effects be? Um, who gets to do it? Who should be in charge? How long do you do it for? Um, could you ever stop? Uh, once you start, do you, need, do you need to keep doing it? Do you know that it would limit temperature rise in the way that you think it would? Um, are you just going to introduce more problems? And in fact, are you going to introduce more problems that are more difficult to solve? Because although climate change is a difficult problem to solve, we know how to do it. We, we reduce carbon dioxide emissions. If you start fiddling with the atmosphere in, in far more uh, crude ways, then you might create problems that, that we don't know how to solve. People have already talked about we could dump a whole lot of iron in the ocean and fertilise algae and that would soak up carbon dioxide. Um, other people are quite rightly concerned about the issue of going around dumping a whole lot of um, effectively pollution in, into the sea. There's those direct effects, but also I think there is there's almost an issue that if you, if you start doing research on this then it gains momentum and it becomes an option that perhaps people hadn't thought of suddenly start thinking about it and that the danger there is it takes away some of the incentive to deal, with, to deal with global warming in, in a way that doesn't involve geoengineering. Because people might think, ah, oh, we don't need to do any of the stuff that the scientists tell us we need to do or the politicians want us to do because they're going to be able to do this in a few years' time. And so there's a real conundrum there about awareness raising. And, and the more people talk about this, the more chance there is of it happening almost. I think you can see that with carbon capture and storage. Um, a decade or so ago, it was sort of this wacky idea that most people hadn't heard of and those that had heard it were slightly uncertain about it. And then fast forward, it's now mainstream government policy, despite any real advances in the science. Um, and you might get that with geoengineering. I mean, I wrote a story a few years ago about the American government under George Bush. We were, were, were trying to get geoengineering onto the agenda as a way of, uh, they, they said it was insurance. Now, it just becomes a question of if we have this weapon in our armory, then we don't need to, 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 deploy, to de deploy the other weapons, I suppose, and, and that's the risk. But then if you don't talk about it and you don't research it, then if we do need it, we'll never be able to do it. Who gets to push the button if, if we do it? Because you're talking about, um, it's almost a unique problem, global warming, because it's caused by individual countries and yet the effects are global. So, so it's very difficult to pin down who's to blame for what. But geoengineering is something that will be, have to be done by individual countries, even if they work together. So do all countries have to agree? Would you have to get unanimous approval across the world? Because if there are side effects, they aren't going to be restricted to the countries that thought it was a good idea to do it. Um, <coughs> so is there a process by which uh, countries could approve, could, could say yes or no? Um, who would decide on, on what scale we did it and for how long for? Um, and I think on, uh, on more solid, sort of important ethical issues about, well, how much do we know about the situation that our children are going, uh, and our grandchildren are going to inherit? Um, because if we start doing it, we might have to keep doing it for an awful long time, if not forever. Um, so, and, and I think there are parallels there with about the global warming. You know, if, if we don't act now, it's going to get more expensive for them to deal with it. Well, with geoengineering, if we do act now, maybe we'll make it more expensive for them to clean up our mess.